I had one of those mornings again. And maybe you've had one of these mornings too. Uh, it's one of those mornings where I wake up and I fail to remember God. Or to say at the least that I fail to think about God first. And that's usually my inclination when I wake up in the morning is to get to God as soon as possible, to get that cup of coffee, that meditation book, that sacred space. But this was one of those mornings maybe where I stayed in bed a little longer than I should have. And I started thinking about the bank account or the disagreement I had with my spouse or the troubling meeting that I had coming up or whatever it was, all these things that distract me from God. And it causes me in that moment to forget the presence of God in my life, the source of love, source of perspective, the source of understanding, the source of strength that helps me deal with all of that other stuff that I got to thinking about too quickly. You know, there's probably a time for all of us when we were in our teens and we had our first crush where we wrote a poem that said something to the effect of, um, you're the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning and the last thing that I think about when I go to bed at night. And I think it might be good to remember at the spiritual level that even though we may have forgotten God, that God has not forgotten us. That like the young poet, we are on God's mind late into the evening and immediately upon waking. So even though God isn't always on my mind, I am always on the mind of God. And I think when we can open up to that truth, that even though when I forget that there's something in me, something divinely around me that remembers, it can uplift me and put me back on course, no matter how big of an asshole or melancholy or distracted or just missing out on the big picture of life that I may be. I had an experience of my daughter that was really powerful uh, a few months back. We were getting ready for school. It was my day to take uh, Nancy June to school, and we were possibly going to be a little bit late. And you know, people talk about their biggest fears, public speaking, death, mine being late. I totally freak out when I'm going to be uh, late to anything. And on this particular morning, I was concerned and that, that stress was showing up in how I was communicating with Nancy June. Nancy, I told you to put your shoes and socks on. Nancy, please remember your backpack. Nancy, we're going to be late. Please listen. And so Nancy gets in the car and we're driving and we're on our way to school. And in the quiet, I hear my daughter's voice from the car seat in the back. Daddy, yes, sweetheart, I want you to know that even when you're mean, I forgive you. Even when you're mean, I forgive you. Uh, and it really touched my heart. And it was a reminder of that truth that God may not always be on my mind, but I'm always on the mind of God. And the divine can show up to us through all sorts of ways. In that moment, it was as my daughter, an angel, a muse, a Jedi in a car seat. May we all open up to that idea that even when we've, when we've forgotten the divine, the divine has never forgotten us. And if we just open our hearts, open our minds, and just calm down, just let go a little bit. It's amazing the ways that the divine can reveal itself to you and to me. So I'm just going to invite you, wherever you are, unless you're driving, to close your eyes and just move into that prayerful voice. The prayerful voice, I mean, is that voice we use, whether we verbalize it or not, that has the presence of the divine remembrance in it. And you can repeat after me if you choose. Spirit, even when I have forgotten you, you remember me. Spirit, even when I have forgotten you, 
you remember me. And perhaps we want to look back on our day to day. It's a Wednesday night insight. And so let's think about our morning. Let's think about our afternoon. Let's think about the late afternoon and think about the times if we're willing to admit them that we forgot God, that we forgot we were a spiritual being, that we forgot that our life meant more than just our individual life, but that our life belongs in the mind and the heart and the spirit and the passion of the divine. And not judging those moments, but simply lining them with prayerful remembering. Can we admit to ourselves? Can we allow the recognition that in those moments the divine was with us, that it was remembering us, and that our remembering it, capital I, it now, brings grace into those spaces, into those places, and into the divine conclusions that are coming about. May we forgive ourselves when we forget, and may we forgive ourselves when we remember that we have forgotten. But may we do so in the spirit of that presence which never forgets us, and is always there with that divine reminder to uplift, to guide, and to show us those angels, those muses, those Jedis in those car seats that help us get back on the track of being who we really are all about why we're really here. And so it is. Amen.